Quick update on, on Messrs Doyle and, and McAtee. Have either of them got a, a chance of playing against Rotherham? Um, Doyle's probably still, I would say, 50-50, but Mac is back in the squad. He's uh, 100% fine. He's trained this morning and um, did a little bit extra just to make sure he's definitely right and he's, uh, he's OK. So, clean bill of health from uh, Saturday as well. A few bumps and bruises. We know we're carrying people over the line at the minute and you know, next Saturday can't come quick enough but, um, so we can get refreshed and re-energised. But, um, yeah, uh, a couple of walking wounded this morning, but they'll all be all fine for tomorrow night. So nobody else kind of back that, that we're not expecting? No, nobody yet. Good to see Lowy out. He's, he's up to In fact, he joined in with us this morning in the little bit of possession and, and boxes that we had. So that's a, another positive one, getting back in the, in the fold with the lads. Jaden's out on the grass um, running as well. Um, but obviously, them two guys who were looking after, you know, after the break. Uh, so no, same same group as Saturday plus uh, Maka. Has that been, as a kind of coaching team perspective, one of the hardest bits over the last month? Just having so many players at so many different stages and working out who you can push, who you can't, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it has. You know, we've probably spent more time, you know, doing that than than anything else really in the last couple of weeks. Um, lads coming back, getting them game time, getting them minutes. Other lads playing with injuries. Can we give them a, a respite? Because you know, we've got at least four who, if we had a fully fit squad, wouldn't even be in the 18. So they, they, they're getting through it. Um, and then obviously it's, it's the recovery after it. Saturday to Saturday won't be too bad, but with it Saturday, Tuesday, it's a bit of a squeeze. But I mean, as I said, you know, the, the lads get so well looked after um, nowadays. Um, in my days, I think it were, you know, he jumped in an ice bath, had a couple of pints and he got ready for the next game. But nowadays they get absolutely everything. Um, so there's no reason why the bodies can't go again. They know, um, and it's nice to have that break on the horizon and you know especially on the back of you know the last three games but we've got to be you know fully on it for the next two and then you know go into that break and get a few more bodies back get the lads that are carrying injuries rested and get the other lads that have been out injured nearer a return. Do you think that will help this week from a both mental and physical perspective with the players knowing that they've only got two to get through and then they have got that, that strange break? Yeah, and I'm sure up and down the country I was speaking to um, the Burnley staff after it and you know they've got obviously they've got a cup game this week as well, but it's it's um, it's what I think everyone will be saying to the players, come on, give us another two more games and then you can them that are carrying injuries just you know can uh, recuperate and uh, Maybe go away for seven to ten days. A lot of them, I'm sure, will be doing that. Get a bit of sun on the backs. But um, yeah, it's just about you know um, the push now to the, them two games and getting that break. With injuries comes opportunity for others. Andre Brooks debut at the weekend. Oli Arblaster home yeah. league debut as well. Irrespective of how it comes, that must be such a, a big plus for everyone at the club. Two boyhood blades, you know, getting those big moments. Yeah, and. Uh, Obviously, it was short and sweet for him, but when they came on, I think Blaster's first touch was took it out the air and played it, you know, played it sides. And then Brooks, who were thinking, just get a touch at ball, and had a couple of nice little touches. So, yeah, they were buzzing after the game. Um, in fact, only 24 hours before it, Brooks had played a full 90 minutes with the 21s down at Birmingham. Um, so, you know, Macca cried off at the last minute. He just wasn't fully right to be on the bench. Brooksy, and and then and then on the park as well. So, yeah, great for them two lads and. Uh, I think they got a little bit of bonus as well, which will help them for Christmas, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that will as well. But it, it's a key part of what Paul Hackingbottom was employed to do at the start in terms of being a football manager and not just a manager, isn't it? To kind of ensure that there is opportunities for these kind of players when it comes around. Yeah, listen, obviously, because we've got a, a big injury list, they've, they've been pushed up the pecking order a little bit um, quicker. But the key is when they come to join us in the training sessions, if they're not up to it, then they, they won't get involved. But, you know, the, the lads that have come up to it um, have all shown that they, they can be comfy in them surroundings. Um, you know, obviously, I'd look at the midfielders a little bit more and Blast is one who's, you know, really progressed really well. Um, and Brooks as well. Different sort of type of a midfield player, but he can, he can play in various positions, but he's certainly got ability. He's only a young boy and he's learning all the time. So. Yeah, the uh, the future looks bright with a lot of the young kids that we've got in the in the group. We've seen some some big games so far this season, some big halves of football. How how big was that that second half of football in terms of an impressive performance on the side at the weekend? It was. I think when we look back, it we start really well. Obviously, lose a poor goal, um, get one back. They have about 15 minutes, I would say, 
slight control of the game. Um, but we come in at half time, and the message was the same what we against Norwich. You know, we came at 2 0 down against Norwich, but we generally felt we could go and win the game, and I think the feeling was exactly the same. It's easy to say it now because we went in and put, but that was the genuine message. Um, you know, just try to cut out obviously the errors. Um, they have got, I mean, the top of the league, they were top of the league, are top of the league, so they've obviously got good players and they're at a good moment. They'd only been beat one in 17. But we've got a great belief in it, the players have got a great belief in each other, um, and with the you know, kicking into our favourite end and the, the the fans behind us was um, was just perfect. We got off to a great start, second half, early goal, and then really just you know just you know got we're all, swarmed all over them. And we've done we've done a lot of good things in the first half, um, but they have got you know some quality players. So uh, yeah, we it was, listen. It was a great great way to finish uh, finish the game, um, but it's gone now. We take the positives, but we look forward to a tough game on Tuesday. Proud of the. Last week, I imagine, three wins after a tough spell, all very different wins yeah. that, that showed different elements to what this squad's all about. Yeah, I think going back to the West Brom game, obviously with a new manager, um, always a difficult when you, you go play a side like that. Again, the, the quality they've got in the in the ranks, if you know, obviously lacking a little bit of confidence, but with a new manager, they, they had a go. And I think the difference on the day was two bits of fantastic finishing. Bristol, as we know, is probably our poorest performance um, in a lot of areas this season, um, but we knew that you know might have been the case. Not the bonus, but they, they, we lacked a little bit of energy in certain areas. Um, but you know we, we got the job done, defended well in the end, uh, and then you know you know Saturday as you say we're a totally different game. Which again Tuesday night will be a totally different game as well. I'm sure. You must be delighted for, for Jack Robinson in particular at the weekend. Um, he had tough spells last season mm -hmm. and came through them and clearly a tough first half. So for him to, to respond the way he did was superb. Yeah, and you could see the lads afterwards or actually when he scored the goal. I mean, I remember turning to Ekin and said that'll do him world of good. Even his, his cross just before it with his right foot, which leads to a goal, just makes him feel a little bit better about himself. Because no matter how many, much words you say to him, I said to him at half time, listen, the only way to redeem it is go out and first corner comes in, go get your head on it and go, you know, make an impact or but it'd be easy to feel sorry for yourself and sort of, you know, lower your levels, but you know, it's all it's all about character, especially when you made a mistake like, you know, the first one's a difficult one, it's a shot and he's trying to block it, it's harsh. Um, the second one's a, obviously an error, he knows that and it, it you know, it would play on his mind. But he came out and, and was very positive and uh, you know, it ended up being a good day for him. How much would you like to be playing behind Ollie McBurney and Illiman and Jai right now in the form that they're in? Um, yeah, listen, they're, they're both you know dovetailing well with each other. There's no doubt about that. I think we saw the benefits of leaving Ollie Mack out at Bristol on Saturday. Um, for him to go Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, we all know he's carrying this hernia problem um, and he's booked in, as we know, for a, um, an operation straight after the game at Cardiff. Um, but yeah, they both bring different things to the, the, the table. Uh, but also, they must be delighted to be, be playing behind or, you know, ahead of the quality that we've got. You know, we all in Orwood's playing at the moment, just to pick him out, for example. But we've got a lot of quality in the group and, um, yeah, but they are on, on top of the game, both of them, and long may that continue. Some thoughts on Rotherham. South Yorkshire derby up next introduces a, a different element to it, doesn't it? It does, and the biggest thing we rattle on about since Saturday, and it goes for the staff, it goes for the players, it goes for the supporters, it goes for everyone that's turning up um, as a Sheffield United point, supporter on Tuesday. We can't be complacent. Uh, I've seen Rotherham live twice this season. I saw them at home at Watford, where I thought they were quite unfortunate. Watford played well, but they were unfortunate to get beat at home. And I saw them at Burnley the other night, where you know a couple of decisions have gone against them. There's no doubt about that. I think it was a harsh second yellow card. But they showed a great spirit, got a lot of energy about them. Um, certainly in the wide areas, up top and, and, and midfield, they've got a lot of energy. And in, you know, we'll have to look back to last season. Um, another South Yorkshire derby when Barnsley came here. And Barnsley were in the, you know, the, the lower half of the table. And you know, I'm not saying certainly in our dressing room it didn't, but a lot of people expect you, especially when you've just beat the top of the league by five goals. People are turning up and thinking, oh, this is going to be you know, a walk in the park or whatever. 100%, you know, we know different. Again, I'll go back to the Barnsley game last, last season. You know, the first half, they were right at it. You know, and we came in at half-time nil-nil and it was probably as poor as we'd been. But it gave us a shake-up. 
so we've got to make sure we start the game properly on Tuesday night. We've um, we've got a lot of respect for them. There's no doubt about that. But we've got we're in a good place at the moment. So we've got to show that energy and that that quality that we've got. But you know, definitely so they've um, they've got a lot of good good bits to the the group. They'll play totally different to Burnley. You know, they'll test us in different different ways. There's no doubt about that. Um, but again, as much as we'll analyse them, which we have done, and look at them, it's the same old message when we go out, it's about what we do. We're at home, we've got to go and make sure we stamp our authority on the game. I mean, they've had an excellent start, both under Paul Warren and Matt mm. Taylor, after getting promoted against teams with such significant budgets. But yeah. I suppose that complacency, that danger you just talked about, mm. Norwich at the weekend and yeah. Burnley, shows mm. that they can compete even with some injury problems of their own and they'll go all the way they'll go to the final whistle you know what I mean they've, they've, yeah, they've got a real good spirit about them uh, again they've got some good players we played them in a, a pre-season game up on the training ground and you know there was some obviously under, under Paul as a manager things have been slightly tweaked but they've got obviously the same same players and you know they've, they're obviously carrying a couple of injuries as well it looks like um, but whoever whoever plays for them um, They've certainly got energy and togetherness. I saw that at Burnley the other night and uh, they were unfortunate not to get someone out of the game. And these are the kind of occasions where they'll pull on that derby Ooh. aspect, won't they? I know you will as well, yeah. but for them, this is this is one of their, their games of the season. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will. You know, We've got to treat it that exactly the same way as we treat every game, but we know it's a, it is a South Yorkshire derby. We, it's one, we want to win every game, naturally. But um, for us, it's a, it's a mentality. Like, What's that if he's gone? As I say, we take the plaudits, the players take the plaudits for a lot of good things, um, but we can't come into this game um, half-hearted in any way. Or So I think for me the key is the mentality approach. We've got a lot of good senior pros in that dressing room um, and we've got to, from that first whistle, get right at them and uh, impose ourselves on, on them like we we've managed to do a lot of teams that have come to Bramall Lane. Just finally, Stuart, you've, you've had a, a cracking career as both a player and a coach now. Just how kind of much are you enjoying your job right now with this group of players and where they're at? I've got to say, I've loved it from the first minute I came in. Um, we've got a good, good staff, a good uh, vibe around the club, a good group of players um, playing in front of the top supporters who are right behind us at this moment in time. I think that was the key. I think last season was lost a sort of... Um, the togetherness with the fans and the, and the, and the players and I, I think you can see uh, the last three games even though we've drawn it home at Blackpool and drawn it at Norwich the atmosphere in the, in the stadium has been brilliant the, the fans have gone home maybe not happy with a couple of draws but in the entertainment that they're getting and they've been right behind us so yeah you know the, the football's um, been great I can't believe we're having a break for this World Cup is there a World Cup or something's happening in next month being a Scotland supporter I don't really know I think but uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's great to work with, the, like, as I said, the really good staff and um, a really good set of players, so long may that continue.